Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're testing some of the most popular CPUs under $300. The Ryzen 5 7500F, the Ryzen 5 9600X, the Ryzen 7 7700X, and I'm seeing how they compare against the legendary 5700X 3D. If you're on AM4 right now and thinking about switching to AM5, or you're building a new system and trying to figure out if a budget AM5 CPU makes sense, this video should help you decide. So here are the configurations I'm using for this test. We'll start with the 5700X3D setup. It's running on an X570 Aorus Master with 64 gigs of DDR4 at 3600 CL16, running a 1 to 1 to 1 F clock to M clock to U clock ratio. This is ideal for AM4. It's also running a minus 30 curve optimizer undervolt for maximum efficiency. For the AM5 CPUs, I used 64 gigs of DDR5 at 6000 CL30 on an X870E Nova motherboard. All CPUs were running a plus 200 boost clock override with the minus 30 curve optimizer undervolt. SMT was left on on all of these chips. I pushed the F clock up as much as possible on each chip and synchronized the U clock and M clock at 1 to 1. This is ideal for AM5. For the in-game settings, I used the low graphics preset to make sure we're testing pure CPU performance and minimize GPU bottlenecks as much as possible. Also doesn't hurt that I'm using a 5090 here. <laughs> for the benchmark itself, I jumped into live conquest matches on the Manhattan Bridge map. Each test followed the same route from the right side spawn, repeated three times each at 1080, 1440, and 4K. I then averaged those results to keep the comparisons accurate and consistent. So here's how everything shook out. Starting in 1080, the 7500F gave a solid baseline with a 172 FPS average, 126 FPS 1% 1 lows, and 110 FPS 0.1% lows. From there, the 9600X delivers about an 8% improvement in average FPS sitting at around 185, while the 7700X stepped up to 194 FPS about a 13% gain over the 7500F. At the top, the 5700X3D reaches 200 FPS, which is around 16% faster than the 7500F and just about 3% ahead of the 7700X. At this resolution, all CPUs perform extremely well, but the 5700X3D maintains the best overall smoothness thanks to its large cache and frame time stability. Moving on to 1440, the 7500F was averaging 169 FPS, giggity giggity, while the 9600X was very close at 172 FPS, just about a 2% difference. The 7700X gained roughly about 12% at 190 FPS, and the 5700X 3D leads again with 195 FPS, which is about 15% faster than the 7500F I'm using as the baseline. However, something interesting showed up here. Even though the 5700X3D has the highest average FPS, the 7700X actually posted slightly better low end consistency with better 1% and 0.1% lows. Maybe this is due to the 7700X's higher clock speeds and architecture efficiency, but I'm not completely sure why that's the case. If anyone has any good ideas on that, let me know in the comments. At 4K, things tighten up further. The 7500F averaged 161 FPS, while the 9600X came in 6% higher at 170. The 7700X jumps 13% at 183, and the 5700X3D jumps 15% ahead at 185. And again, even though the 5700X3D edged out the 7700X on average FPS, the 7700X again posted stronger 1% and 0.1% lows, giving it a slightly better rating on smoothness. And even in 4K where we're more GPU bound, there are some noticeable differences between each of these chips. So if you're on an older setup and trying to decide whether it's worth jumping to a budget AM5 CPU or sticking with the trusty old 5700X3D, for most people, the 5700X3D is still going to be the best choice. I've put together some numbers showing the cost per FPS for each of the CPUs tested here using current US pricing as of November 2025. I'm including the cost of both the CPU and 64 gigs of RAM since the CPU and RAM go hand in hand in my opinion. I tested with 64 gigs across the board, and while you could go with less, I can't guarantee you'll see the same performance numbers, so that's what I used here. When it comes to pricing, here's where things stand right now. The 5700X3D is basically off the market now. 
you'll mostly find it used typically between 250 to 300 so let's call it 275 the 7700x is still available on shelves it's usually in the same price range so let's call that 275 as well the 9600x comes in around 200 dollars and the 7500f usually goes for around 150. obviously pricing varies depending on where you live and when you're buying sometimes you'll get a good sale but I'm using the most common current market prices here. Now, the reason I'm including RAM in this analysis is because it's a big part of the purchase considerations right now. RAM prices have nearly tripled over the last few months as AI companies continue to buy up massive amounts of memory, causing shortages and price hikes across both DDR4 and DDR5. Storage components are likely to follow the same trend soon. So while we had a brief dip in hardware prices earlier this year, that's pretty much over. Memory demand has pushed the cost of most components back up again. And right now, 64 gigs of DDR4 with decent timings will cost around 300 bucks, while 64 gigs of DDR5 will run you an insane 400 bucks right now. So taking all that into account, here's what the cost per FPS looks like when combining CPU and memory pricing. The 5700X3D with 64 gigs of DDR4 is gonna be about 575 bucks. And that comes out to about 288 per FPS at 1080. 295 at 1440 and 311 at 4k the 7700x with 64 gigs is going to run you about 675 dollars and that comes out to about 348 per fps at 1080 355 at 1440 and 369 at 4k the 9600x with 64 gigs is going to run you about 600 bucks and that comes out to about 324 per fps at 1080 349 at 1440 and 353 per fps at 4k lastly the 7500f with 64 gigs is going to cost around 550 dollars that comes out to about three dollars and 20 cents per fps at 1080 326 at 1440 and 342 at 4k <clears throat> overall the 5700 x3d not only delivers the best performance here but also the best value by a comfortable margin averaging about $2.98 per FPS across all resolutions tested here. It's the best bang for the buck option by far, especially for anyone who's already on AM4. The next best value is the 7500F with an average of 329 per FPS. Performance is the lowest of the group here, but proportionally it's actually a decent value for an entry level AM5 chip. Then comes the 9600X averaging $3.42 per FPS here. It's a well-rounded CPU, but a tiny bit overpriced for what you're getting compared to the other options here. Lastly, we've got the 7700X, which performs closely to the 5700X3D, but ends up with the worst cost efficiency of the bunch at $3.57 per FPS. Great performance, just not great value. So if you're dead set on building with all new parts, the 9600X and 7500F make solid entry points into AM5, both offer respectable performance for their prices, but if your goal is maximum performance per dollar, I'd be hunting for a 5700X3D, 5800X3D, or even a 5600X3D, and I'd pair that with their reasonably priced B550 motherboard. Even if you're piecing it together with used parts, that route still gives you the best overall gaming experience and value right now. And those of you who'd argue for quote unquote future proofing, I've never really bought into that concept. I've always said buy for what you need today. Spending extra on better hardware you won't actually use today rarely makes sense because by the time you can actually take advantage of it, newer and faster stuff will already be out and whatever you spend extra on that will have dropped in price anyways. To each their own, but that's my opinion on it. So that's everything I've got for this one. I hope you found it helpful. If it helped you make a purchase decision, please consider using the affiliate links down below. It's the best way to support the channel and it really helps me to keep bringing you hardware comparisons like this. And if not, no worries. Thanks for checking out my content anyway. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.